Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see another graphical method of synthesis problem. That method is known as relative pole method. And same, this relative pole method, it is for three position synthesis for the offset slider crank chain mechanism and for the four bar chain mechanism. So here, this is the offset slider crank chain mechanism. Now this mechanism it has been synthesized, but for this mechanism, what are the given data that I am telling you? So here, first of all, you will be knowing the now this is the fixed point. You can see it as A, this is B, and this is C. Now from second and third position, you have to now synthesize the first position for this problem. By second and by knowing the second and third position, you will be knowing the first position. Now, for example, here the length of the crank is known. Then initial uh, uh, angle, the initial angle of the crank for the uh, slider crank chain mechanism is also known. Then afterwards, <coughs> the the missed the year, we have to just take an arbitrary position. Suppose, uh, for example, uh, this C point, this will be you know the eccentricity value in this given data. So you have to draw this line which is parallel to this reference line. Then afterwards, you will be knowing the second and third position of the slider, and also you will be knowing. The second and third position of the crank. Then what you have to do after? Th then afterwards you have to just take the distance half the for the second position and the distance half for the third position. Then after drawing this first and I mean second and third position vertical line to this uh, horizontal line, then you will be knowing second position of the crank and third position of the crank. You have to take half this value of second and third. And you have to just join these lines from this point. Suppose if you consider that A, is A is given to the line which is, for example, this line theta one two by two. It this this line particularly intersect this line vertical line which is half distance for the second position of the crank. And now third position is now this which will intersect this line should intersect that point. Okay. Then afterwards, what you have to do? You have to just join. This P1, we will be getting two pole points. Suppose P12 as the pole point first, and P13 as the pole point second. Then afterwards, you have to measure the angle. For example, now here if you see the E, or and here if if it is given as name F, now you have to just measure the angle A P1 E. So this angle A P1 P12, and this here it is E. So this angle should be equal to angle B1. P12 to Q12 angle A P12 E will be equal to angle B1 P12 to Q12 and then next angle A P13 F that angle will be equal to what B1 P13 Q13 so these two angles should be equal and these two lines whatever the separate angle separated by this line. This P12, Q12, and P13, Q13. These two lines they will intersect at this eccentricity line at one point. So you will get directly the C1 position line or C1 position point. So these two lines will get intersect at this point C1. So you'll be getting the first position of the slider, means that is S1. Okay. Then afterwards, you have to join this B1 to this C1, so that you will be having your first orientation that is A B1 C1. So from this relative pole method for the offset slider crank chain mechanism, by knowing the initial position of the crank, by knowing the crank length, then by knowing the second and third position of the slider, and also we are knowing the eccentricity, and the second and third position of the crank, we will be getting the initial position of the slider or initial position of the Slider crank chain mechanism. Now, this after offset slider crank chain mechanism. Now we will going to see the four bar chain mechanism. So here in this four bar chain mechanism, here also the length of the fixed link is known. Then the length of the crank is known. Then initial angle of the crank is also known. Then the second and third position of the crank is known as well as the second and third position of the output link is also known here. So this is the fixed link. This is the crank. This is the coupler. This is the rocker or output link. To this link AB, input is given, and from this link CD, that is rocker or output link, output is taken. So initially, 
when <clears throat> for a second and third position through this point a for getting the points uh, p13 and p12 here first of all you have to just uh, take angle theta 1 to theta 1 to second position half and uh, second position of this uh, output link as half so both of these lines they will intersect at p12 and for third position theta 1 3 by 2 half and for half uh, third position for the output link half this we will get p13 as pole point then afterwards you have to join this p13 to b and p12 to b okay you have to join this p12 to b and p13 to b then angle whatever the angle subtracted by this d p13 b that angle will be equal to what d p13 this c point okay and angle subtracted by this d p12 b that will be equal to angle subtracted by the d p12 this c point so you will get directly here the first position of the coupler point c point and then afterwards by joining b to c you will get the length of the coupler and by joining c to d you will be getting the length of the output link and from this you will be getting the initial position of the crank yeah sorry initial position of the output link thank you